real right now. Mr. DL. Two, two, two. Two, two, two. Who's off? Yo, we are here. Listen. We here, we glad, we blessed, and it's incredible. We're going to puff on some nice shit and eat edibles. We got some flavor for your ears today, actually, coming up. Yep. We got rocket fuel. Dip that shit in the dust. We got Pull Easy that Mo shit B. hard, man, and still be high. You know what it is? Easy Mo Bizzle. Easy Mo B on a podcast today. In e- the comment section, let us know your favorite Easy Mo B. Easy Mo Biscuit. Hey, yo, listen, listen how he said Easy Mo B. Right, see what I'm saying? He got three names, cause easy. So if you didn't know him, you don't even know what to say, yo. Cause you're not gonna say, yo, what's up, Easy Mo B? You know what I mean? You gonna say E, Easy, yeah. You know what I mean? Mo, Mo B, B. Like, it's too many of them shits. But Easy Mo B, legendary classic. You don't know about him? You got some time to Google him before he come on. What's your favorite beat off the top from him? I mean, I think it's that that warning joint. Oh wow, you know what I'm okay. Saying? Da-da. You know what I'm saying? Mm. That, so that Isaac Hayes shit, Mm-mm. that's just, come on, man. Off the top, for me, it's flavoring. Oh, no, yeah. that's, uh, yeah. Just, I don't know what something about that beat is still just so that's crazy. That's dope, too. Maybe just I brown. didn't say the right beat, brown. too. You know what I mean? There's just something about it. Just so man, that Easy Mo B was and is a legend with that, man. This shit is, you know? But any man, what you, what you got popping? Show stopping. What do we, what nah, you got? I'm just uh, excited to get to this interview. We got um, Pusha T has some uh, some news. You were telling me about Pusha T earlier. Yeah, word. Pusha T and Malice got back together. That's dope. As the clips, I've been waiting for that. They performed three songs. You know what I'm saying? Grinding, cock damn. Another joint too, man. I don't exactly know. I don't be trying to be verbatim sometimes. But it was dope. They haven't done that in ten years. So oh. it was dope, and they was doing it at um, Pharrell's Something in the Waters Festival. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, Pusha T and Malice, known collectively as The Clips, reunited for their first performance in over a decade. And their good friends, Pharrell, Something in the Water Festival. Man, it was amazing, incredible shit. You know what I'm saying? During the Skateboard Peace headline, Pharrell and Friends set, which also boasted cameos from T.I. and Nori. <laughs> The brothers Thornton produced one of the highlights of the entire three-day festival by hitting the stage to perform Like I Love You with fellow special guest Justin Timberlake. There was a lot of shit going on. But one of the illest moments had to be the clips. You know what I'm saying? Because everybody know, man, that's just it was fire and magic with them brothers, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, grind, they, they did the Mr. Me Too cod damn and grinded. With Malice embracing coke rap bars like break down keys into dimes and sell them like gobstoppers. Yo, they know what time it is, man. You know what I'm saying? God damn, you know what it is. Ah, uh, Clips, man, back together. So that's dope. That was dope. And I think we spoke previously about them doing an the album. So maybe that's what's going on. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, they're trying to test the waters. You know? So shout out to Clips. Shout out to Pharrell. You know what I'm saying? Keep it popping. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's all we can say here. What you think about the uh, Drake album? You hear anything about that? What'd you say? The Drake album? Oh, nah. See that, people getting upset about it uh, because uh, he, he got listed it as, 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 as dance yo, music. Yo, you got that oons oons. <laughs> that, that's what my son was telling me. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then I don't know why I ever came. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's, and you know that's what it is. She had tears in the rain. You know how that shit will be, man. You know, like, yo, it's that. And then you get motherfuckers to know that it wasn't gangster to sit there and say, that shit was gangster? Uh, you know what I'm saying? It wasn't supposed to be. It was supposed to be. Every time you do that, I can't. Uh, uh, da, da, da. <laughs> Yo, you know how that shit works, huh? And, and, you know what it is? Yeah. I'm never gonna cry when you cry with me. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm D R A K E. I'm never gonna. <laughs> oh, come on. Drake's wilding right now. But yo, um,. Yeah, I didn't hear that much about that. Maybe yeah, I just saw people hating on it. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't listen to it. I can't a lot lie. Of people but I just saw the negative reactions to it. People figure that they can't pick in their nose, they're going to hate. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's one of them things, right? Flavor Flav's in the news. 
what, what, what was he doing? Been on the Flintstones with no shoes on. <laughs> and they told him to boot up. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Strap up, play. Jungle. Oh, man. Hold on, man. That's more B. Ask some question. Mm -hmm. All right, we're here with the legend. Yo, we here, man. Episode 23 with my man. You know what I'm saying? Easy Mo B. You know what I'm saying? What's good, man? What's good? A lot of people that are listening and that are new to the situation, uh, uh, Easy Mo B, can you just give us a, a, a quick backstory, man, and just bring it, bring it where we are right now? Like, you know, who is Easy Mo B, where you're from, and you know what I mean, the origins, like, you know what I mean? Yeah, for those who may not be uh, familiar, I am Easy Mo B, born in Brooklyn, Lafayette Gardens, Housing Projects, Bedford Stuyvesant, Matter of fact, mm -hmm. I, I ran into you around there too. Yeah, no question. Yeah, that's when I learned. I learned about that years yeah. earlier. I learned about that uh, do or die bed star shit years ago. Right? <laughs> yeah, you know I mean, so. yes, sir. But um, yeah, DJ turned producer, uh, lover of music, man, heavy collector of vinyl. I know y'all see my boxes in the back. I'm hip. I'm hip. I even managed, I even managed to pull up something a little quick. Question, you understand? Shout out, salute. You know what I'm saying? I, when I seen all them boxes, I was like, I know he ain't, you know, he ain't a lawyer, man, dealing with a bunch of cases and shit, a backlog. So I wasn't sure, you know what I mean? <laughs> I said, man, you know what I mean? Because, you know, dudes switch up, but appreciate that legendary shit, man, and, and what you do. So so you're from Brooklyn. Um, and when I met you years ago, for those who don't know, it was just like on the scene, just chilling in with Black, you know, if you remember Black, I'm sure, and Guru, he's like, this is my man. And this was so early. Even uh, afterwards, I thought I saw, well, you were in a group for a minute, right? Yeah, I was in a group called Rapping is Fundamental. Big shout to AB Money and JR, wherever they at. You know? mm -hmm. So that was who was in the group? Yeah. Oh, and all okay. three of us was, was from LG, from Lafayette Gardens. Right. So, Right, came right. To perform a group. I remember seeing the picture on a magazine couple and whatever, and I had already met you, and I was like, oh shoot, man, this dude's in a group. You know, because I'm still, that's fresh with me. I had just came home, and it was fresh being in New York, and my man Goo, and I'm like, man, you know, meeting everybody, and uh, next thing you know, I turned around, and then I knew Easy Mo B as a producer. I'm saying, like, I mean, because, you know, I, we'll run into you, but then I'll see you. You know what I'm saying? You know, them, them was the high top days and all that. You know what I mean? So I'd be like, oh yeah, me too. Me too. You know what I mean? But we, you can see we let that ship sail. But I mean, I had that too. Yeah, when it was time. But when, when it was rocking, we all, we had them shit. So, and um, and next you know, I'm like, damn man, not only was you producer, you ended up playing, I mean, uh, playing a big part with some iconic records, man, some, some some legendary records um that obviously we didn't know the magnitude of them and what they it would become. And, and you know, um when you got to that point, like when you did what I'm speaking about, like some songs for big uh notorious uh B. I. G. He did six songs on his first album. Yeah. And so when you did the songs, like at that time, did you know where Big was going? You know, did you feel like, you know, where he was going or or yourself with this with this music, this magical combination, you know? Nah, you 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 never really know. You never really know. Actually, at the time, most of us, we just having fun, what we doing. Mm -hmm. It's all about the music. And you don't you you can't predict. I'll give you another example of how you can't predict. In in that same Brooklyn, let me see, what was the building? 226 Pacific Street, downtown Brooklyn, kind of like across the street on a slant from where they was keeping R. Kelly in that mm. Brooklyn detention <laughs> center downtown. No, but that's the area. Yeah. On a slant, not too far from there, is a mm. studio I used to go to. The address was 226 mm. Pacific Street. Right. And it, was the, and it was these two dudes, more than once, we used to run into them on the stairway. They would be leaving and we would be coming in. Mm -hmm. And they had an engineer named Slomo. 
Sun. Yeah, slow mo. I knew slow mo. Yeah. And the yeah. name of the studio, and the name of the studio was what was the name of the studio? Such a sound. Right. And when they would leave, we would come in, and and he told me he said, slow mo said, yo, these two guys, man, their name is, is Gangstar. He said it's DJ Premier and a guy rapper named Guru. Right. Now when they were doing that. We saw them in their prom. We saw it's in our prom. Today, Gangstar is a, a legendary, like a foundation, an institution, right? Mm-hmm. I'm trying right. to give an example of how you never know where you're going. When they used to, when we used to see each other walking, passing each other on the steps there, they didn't know that you know, I would go on and do what I would do and they would go on mm-hmm. to become icons. Mm-hmm. It's like what you, it's like what you said, when I met you, like I'm saying, I found out um, you rapping, you know, cause Google said, yo, see that, there's these more people, blah, blah. And I was like, oh, that's that dude, you know, we, we met. And then next you know, I saw you get up. Cause at that time I always tell people what was going on in hip hop, we was always around, everybody was around each other. We've had previous guests on the show, uh, Pete Rock, Billy Dance. Um, I don't know the theory about that. You know, it, 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 I think because back then all the rappers were from the same place, pretty much. I mean, it was a there was a you big contingency. The, you were a, a very far, far and few between out of towners were in that scene. New York, like New York you know was, I mean? was the move. But what I was getting to on the other note was um, when you did the Biggie album. Now you know, like who connected who who. Who get that, you know, put you in that position? Was it Puff? Was it somebody else? Or, you know, for you to even make tracks and say, for this for this kid, uh, Big, you know? Okay, the path that led to Big started like this. Um, I know you I know you remember in the early 90s and, uh, and all throughout the 80s too, Rush. Mm-hmm. Rush that was run by um, Russell Simmons. I called up on information one day when I first uh, got my first thing under my belt, which was um, uh, Big Daddy Kane. That's all I had under my belt. Mm. And I called information one day, 411. I asked them, what was the, the, the phone number to rush management? Called up there. I met this lady. She set up a meeting up with me. Her name was Francesca Sparrow, rest in peace. Mm. She put me on. She was managing me there at RPM. All type of projects start coming my way. So then one day she told me, I want you to go up to um, Uptown. I said, Andre's got a new, Andre Harrell, Andre's got a new artist that he wants you to uh, play some music for. They need a song for this new artist on this soundtrack that they're doing. And the soundtrack, she said, was a movie called Who's the Man? Mm. So I go up there. Yeah, with Dr. Dre. Yeah, yeah. Guru was in that. Oh, that, yes, sir. Yes, yes sir. R.I.P. So, we talked about that. I end up meeting this new artist. Come to find out, DJ Mr. C, who used to live in my building in LG, but then he moved like about four blocks away, got his new apartment. One time he had played me a demo he had on this new artist. So mm. I go up there to the meeting with Andre Arrell at Uptown, and it's this same new artist. Eventually they put me together. It was only supposed to be one song. Mm. One song, that's all they needed for the mm. soundtrack. All right, I meet Sean Puffy Combs. All right, we go into the studio and we start recording because at the time Puff was the A and R up there. Andre right. had in that position. Right. All right, so he puts Puffy with me, and Puffy starts directing me on what he want to do with Big. We do the one song called "Party and Bullshit." Yeah, that was you, huh? Yeah, that goes. That goes cool. on who's the man soundtrack. Right. Love starts to love the chemistry between me and Big. It's like, mm. yo, I want to keep recording joints. They decided they're going to do an album on this new artist. Mm. Mm. And mm. then it just spilled into like six songs, man. And there's, and there's like two or three other songs that 
I recorded with him that they never seen the light of day, plus some mm. remixes and stuff like that. But six landed on the album. You still do you record. have any unreleased ones? Still sitting there on some dats or something? Yeah, there was a joint call. Money, holes, clothes, something like that. There's um <laughs> Sounds like big. <laughs> The original, the original version too. What you want, nigga? That never even seen the light of day. It mm. sure enough ain't out there on vinyl unless it's bootleg. Mm. There's a whole bunch of other remixes. Can you, can you uh, just say for you know the classic six songs that they were on that album? Yeah, that was the title track, "Ready to Die," "Warning," "Give Me the Loot," "The What." Friend of mine, and I'm I'm leaving. The machine gun stuff. funk. Machine gun funk. Boom. Yo, <laughs> yo, yo, yo. Those are the six that made the album. Yeah. That was my like when I was hearing these joints. I'm like, <clears throat> it was sort of like, it was almost like that soul was like Isaac Hayes meets hip hop like type shit. You know what I mean? It was like, you know what I mean? It was like all that shit was in there, man. Even because of Big being Big, whatever. It's like Barry Way, Isaac Hayes, hip hop. You know what I mean, so it was so smooth, but so you know how he was a storyteller. So you said Kane, you had did a song for Kane before. Yeah, the real the real path starts out. I'm in a group called Rapping is Fundamental, right? We three brothers from the projects. We joined together. We got a group. All right, my my brother uh, A B Money in the group. He used to go to uh, Sarah J Hale High School downtown Brooklyn with Kane, he was always telling them about me. So finally Kane gave me a shot. I got two songs on Kane's second album, another victory in calling Mr. Welfare. <laughs> that's what, that, that right there, that's what bankrolled everything else. Everything oh. else came out of that. That was my hey. first official shot. Um, uh, the, producer yeah. in me, the producer in me has to know, which of those six beats was your favorite? Mm. Before he rapped to it, before anything, what the beat alone? Okay, I would have to say, um, man, that's tough. You asking the dude that made it? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no question. Listen, it's Plus a lot man. of things on there. We all know what the, with the hip hop producers. You know what we do? We whether it's, it's chopped up sound or whether it's a mm -hmm. loop or whatever what we yeah. like to do we like to drum it up add kicks and snares and all of that but the most raw joint out of all of them that didn't have the kicks and snares it was just raw was the what i mm -hmm. have to say mm -hmm. oh yeah thank you for answering that because, um, because <laughs> also because I, I say um the what and also we seen that that uh same process take place that happened on Machine Gun Funk, but on the what is where you see, you get a, a taste of my personal style. That's where my style is really being shown. You know, chopping chopping the samples and pitching them high and low and, you know, just making something from nothing. There's people that went and listened to the original sample for the what, and they, they like, bro, like, yo, how did you, it's just something creatively that you sit there, it, it, it's, it's like cut and paste. Mm. And then after a while it becomes musical. Of course, it was, which, which, which shaped you too, I'm sure. You seem like you, you're yeah. always there for the mix down. Is that, <laughs> they just. That's important, that's important. Okay. That's, matter of fact, that's the most important process of, of, of part of the process. Cause after the record is made, now you got the actual final, Sonic quality was off. So that's, that's gonna determine everything. As we move forward to the next album, you know, which was was the last at that time, right? Yeah, yeah. so um so how many songs did you have on there? On on Life After Death, the second right. album, I only had two on there. Right. Which ones were they? I love the Doe featuring Angela Wimbush and Jay Z and Going back to Cali. Yeah. Oh, that was dan, dan, dan. Yeah, let's see, easy, more visible. Yo, I, you know. You'll notice, you'll notice the, the, the difference, the contrast between the 
the first joints. And these, and the reason why is because on the second album, Puff had told me, you know, he was taking a totally different direction. <clears throat> this was, um, to a certain degree, not the whole album, but to a certain degree, more radio, yeah. more, club, more club, more bounce. Mm. So I you, you can see that first one was a little bit raw, you know, we had Premier and them, <clears throat> we're kicking the door on all them type joints. That's what that's what Big was looking for. Like Big was, you know. Salute, Salute DJ Premier. That's my yeah, dude. man. No doubt, man. Actually, we're working on an album right now. <clears throat> Seven songs deep, man. Like we we still rocking, man. I gotta like I gotta <laughs> I gotta reach in, man. Grab one of them joints from uh, Easy Mo B, though, man. Hell yeah. You know what I'm saying? If you want, if you want, but I know Premier. Premier is a genius. Oh, he, he definitely is. If he, if he need to. But but you got that so you got that other edge part too. Like you know, different shit then brings out different people. You know what I'm saying? Like different what's in me. So I'm yeah, like a, an know. easy mode beat beat with a DJ Premier hook scratch could be still on a DJ Premier Big Sugar album. I mean, regardless, man. I guess you could be right. You could be right because I remember these are some of the last um, days in DMD. Man, rest in peace. Yes. DMD. Studios. Not only was it a studio, it was just a vibe just to be in that building. But I'll never forget Primo, he called me down there to have a meeting with me. Mm. And this was when this was the making of um of uh poet, aka black poet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Working on his album. And I was surprised because you know Prem is a master at what he do. And he's right. sufficient, he's sufficient all by himself. And the making for Poet's album, he called me in. He was like, yo, I'm gonna need a joint for you for Poet. Mm. And we sat down right there in that room. When you mm. walk in D and D, if anybody remember the studio, when you come in, cut left. Of course. You know, I lived it. Go back there where it's that that real dark corner over there. No the question. Left. Feel like you feel like somebody gonna get robbed and shit. It ain't gonna be me. But I mean, now nah, you know what I mean? It was weird. It was like it was like the projects when you go in the hallways out in there. You like, you know, with, with them niggas there down the hall. Okay, okay, and go in the Prem's room. All the rooms was in the cut too. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it wasn't. You know what I mean? It was. It, it had that because you know I spent a lot of time there, obviously. So it was that vibe, and it was a part of life history. You know what I'm saying? As we stay here today, and I saw a lot of the people in the studio come in from Karis One to Biggie to, you know, whoever, whoever uh, Jay-Z, now nah, everybody came through there, like, you know, so Preem was touching Man, everybody. See. Oh, yeah. And d, &D oh. you, you could have seen anything. You could have seen a dice game going on in the hallway. Of course, no it question. was mad trees in the air. No question. You everything. But once you made it into them rooms and the door closed, it was a whole nother world. It was cut off. It was cut off all that other was just how grimy it was. I wish I, I never got it to see it. No, the only part that wasn't grimy about it was that the two dudes who owned it looked like you. Oh, nah, but nah, that's, that, that was our boys though, Dave and Doug. <laughs> yes. One was big as hell, the other one was little. You know what I mean? So they, that was their shit, but we, we, we lived there. We ate there, we did everything, man. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, shout, to, shout to Doug Grommer, wherever he is. I was I'm close. I was closer with Doug. So staying on this um, uh, life after death, what what was it like producing for Biggie and Tupac while all this shit was going on between them? Were you like stuck in the middle? Did they want to hear records that you know that the other was doing? What was that like? I tell a lot of people and they can't believe it, but you know I got the work done and I got the work in before the the actual beef set in between okay. them. First I worked with Big, right? And then Pac came to New York to uh, record, uh, to film Above the Rim. And while he was here, he was like, yo, come up to come up to Rucker Park. I'm up there filming. So I went in the trailer and played him some tracks. He booked studio. We was going back and forth to the studio. He was in, he was actually in court by day. And, and went to the studio by night. Whoa. He would go. He would, he would go to court till like four o'clock in the afternoon, and he'd take like a two-hour break. And the studio was set six o'clock every day. You remember uh, Unique Studios, right, Shug? Yes. At this time, they was friends. 
they was cool. And and Pac actually asked me, he said, yo, you the dude, you work with Big, right? He said, yeah, yeah, I like your stuff. I always wanted to work with you. He said, I'm in town. So, you know, let's, let's hook up, let's do something. He set the studio up. Proof that they were actually cool because in the batch of the songs that I recorded for, for Pac, one of them was called, this is the original long title, Running From The Police. Mm. The title actually got knocked down to just running. I think we all know why. <laughs> yeah, just of course. Cool. Used all, all of that, all them words. But um, that song that I recorded with them, up in, up on the top floor, I think that was the 10th floor, where Studio C was in Unique Studio. Pac had the idea he wanted to put, he had big, he had Stretch, rest in peace to Stretch. Also. Yeah, I knew Stretch too, man, yeah. yeah. And, and, dra and uh, Drama Seidel from the Outlaws, he put him, he was at the top of the record. He opened the joint up. And we was all in the studio, man, just chilling. That was proof right there that they was cool. I lived that, man. So, you understand? So I lived that. I was in that room watching these two, be, two, two dudes be friends and make make records together and both of them walking over to me telling me yeah yeah no no change up that second hook no no do this do that i witnessed that i lived that somehow <laughs> after that it kind of you know what i mean unfolded into something different right i'm fortunate enough to say i was there and able to see when it was cool and you you produced some um, songs for tupac as well at that same time yeah, this I started recording with Pac for me against the world right after mm. the stuff I had did for Big. Right, right. Wow, it's crazy. What has Easy Mo B been into, and, and you know what, what, what's there on the horizon? Well, nothing has changed. I'm still producing, making mm -hmm. beat. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, I got an album. I, I prefer that it be an instrumental album. Mm -hmm. It's going to be an instrumental album that I'm working on, I'm putting together. It's going to come out. And I think the reason for that is I think people have seen me with, with so many different artists. I want to use this 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 album to, for people to be able to focus on me. Right. What are you going to call it? Like Easy Mo Beats or something? I got a title. I'm not. I'm not gonna share. That. <laughs> <laughs> All right. No exclusive. No exclusive. Because it's so nice, somebody might steal it. We're not even gonna share that. He, he said easy move beats. That shoes, man. Yo, I feel like I heard that before. It's crazy. But I'm. I'm, but, I'm still, but I'm still producing. Um, I went back and I, and this is now going on as much as almost 15 years ago. I went back and reactivated my love for the whole reason why I'm even doing this. I went back and I reactivated the love. <laughs> You're DJ. back. To oh, okay, okay. Yeah, that's 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 the whole reason why we're here. If it wasn't for my father, rest in peace who passed on the love of music to me. He was a man of many records. You know, he made me love music. And then I watched the hip hop be born right before my eyes, right out there in the streets, mm. block party and everything. And then just wanting to do what I heard. What I heard was Molly Maul was, uh, you know, uh, from Run DMC to even before that, you are talking about mm. Cole, Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five. This sensation made me want to be a part of it, made me want to do it, made me want to get on the ones and twos. Not knowing, mm. not knowing that many years later that this thing here, the DJing and the love of the music would trans, it would kind of transition into, from playing music to making music. And that's mm. what happened to me. Mm. You know, since, um, well, we could say now, well, a little over 
yeah, a little tiny bit over 30 years of my life, man, mm. has been dedicated and owed to this right here, DJing and producing. Mm. Mm. Respect on that. Oh, that's a long amount of time to be able to say. That's a large mm. chunk of your life. Yeah, they just... Uh, um, Rolling Stone just said that that album was the number one hip hop album of all time, and you produced a quarter of it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know what? That's that's um that's their opinion, and of course, yeah, that's kind of everybody's opinion, man. I, you know, I can't help but be happy because I was involved, so I posted it up on my Instagram page. Oh boy, that's one of the last things I should have ever did. <laughs> that started mad controversy up there. All you gotta do is go on the on the post and just read all of the <clears> comments. <throat> so I, I'll say this right here. Big, what he did and the legacy he left behind, yes indeed, he's one of the greatest. He's one of the greatest, man. I'm trying to tell you. I mean I'll I should tell you I'll tell you this, the number one greatest hip hop album of all time. There's too many artists that even came way before us. You better mm. sit and you better think hard, real hard, mm. before you decide to actually label any certain album number one. It's just like, what is the number one hip hop hip hop producer of all? I know you. I know you're being humble. I I know you're being humble, and I get it. But in the court of public opinion, that album is the uh is is the probably the number one rap album i th i think i person that's my personal opinion but yeah you got that let me let me ask you i'll just say I, I was glad to just be a part of it yeah yeah, yeah. oh yeah happy to be here man i'm gonna make something happen while i'm here you know <laughs> like i said earlier in the podcast man we got a clip channel it's on youtube it's not this channel it's a whole other channel uh, dedicated just to the Danger Zone podcast. If you subscribe to that channel in the playlist section, you can watch all the episodes. It's, a, it's just for that channel. But the most important thing is there's a clip section mm -hmm. for you know people who like content in, in smaller doses. Boom, highlights. Perfect, perfect yeah. word. Highlights. No. We got highlights of the show. We, we um, got yeah, we, like you said, we got clips. We got highlights. We got sug lights. And we got. <laughs> We got lights now. The shit, you know, check in, tune in, man. Catch up with us, man. You know. So I like to just ask you too, from from back in the day when you began, what's now? We just like you to give us um ten of your your, your favorite MCs. You know what I'm saying? Oh, shit, ten good. MCs, man. You know, just that 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 easy mo be like. You know what I'm saying? That you know, over over the yeah. beginning or whatever. You know. The era. The era doesn't matter. Nah, there's there's ten. Ten you, you, you know you fuck with like that, you know what I mean? Ten. Now see, see here we go again. There's ten, right? <laughs> I yeah. gotta narrow I know from the I pioneers know. all the way hey. to now into ten. No, you know what happens, you know what it is. So a lot of times, man, I will hear people and they always saying, yo, give me your top five. Give me top five, top five. So well, okay, let me give Cash five more. Of course, there's hundreds of them, but then there's always that ten that you could pick out. I'm pretty sure. I have an idea for you next. Time. So we, so we right here, man. What's good? Well, well, if we talk about from the pioneer era, oh man, one of my first uh, voices, one of the first great voices I ever heard that I love so much, and he's still living to this day. To salute Grandmaster Kaz of Cold. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Grandmaster Kaz, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that that like like Guru said, it's mostly the voice. The voice, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And that's what you had that that voice. So Grandmaster Cavs, moving on, um, Cool Mo D. Yeah. Now gonna, look, look. Now we're gonna stop at number two. I, I remember where I'm at. I'm not gonna lose my spot. I got you. I'm gonna say Cool Mo D because. Treacherous, he was a part of the group Treacherous 3. I right. Thought, I thought Treacherous 3 was one of the dopest groups, and I felt like Cool Mo D was one of the most innovative, I ain't even gonna say rappers at the time, MC.
that came along because when everybody else was rhyming according to you know traditional structure he was in he was injecting brand new rhythms Mr. DL. like when you he was doubling up yes. on the syllables and everything yeah. i love that that dude and everything that he was doing so much so i named myself after I wanted a name so similar to him. I thought he was so dope. I made a name that sounded like his. He was Easy cool. Moby. That's crazy. No, no, seriously. Listen, I, I still remember my spot. More too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got you. I just got to tell the story. I just got to tell nah, the story. You got to tell it. It's cool. Man. Here, man. You know? He was cool. Moby. I was like, cool, what's some similar adjective to cool? Easy. All right, easy. He was Mo, M-O-E. I said, drop that E. He was D for his last name, Deweese. I said, put the B on D. Because my my family nickname and what they used to call me in the projects, Booby. So put that B in it. Easy Mo B. So my name actually comes from Cool Mo D. Mm. It's great. One, of the most, one of the most innovative and influential MCs. And even as far as I'm concerned, my name was derived out of him. So all right. This is gonna sound crazy following right after him. And if people remember history-wise, this is controversial. LL Cool J. Mm. <laughs> yeah, they're now. Now that's controversial because they had their thing. Right. <laughs> They had they had their problems back in the day, just lyrical battles and stuff. But mm-hmm. LL Cool J, we moving moving along. Um, let me see. Mm-hmm. KRS One. KRS One, yeah. Come on, man. come on, man. I believe One, that's your man's favorite jump. Rock Kim. Okay, we Ooh. on five. Yeah, Rock Kim. Yeah, Rock Kim. He gotta do a new four. Move to the other hand. Move to the other hand. Move to the other hand. Six. I'm, I'm here. Big Daddy Kane. Big Daddy Kane. Oh yeah. King Asiatic. Yes, sir. Um. Uh. This is getting tricky here now because we moving up in the, in the years. Um, damn, this is tough, man. Why are you doing this, man? You know what? I gotta say, you know what? I gotta say, um, because we naming all dudes here. I got to say, um, oh shit, MC Light, man. Yes, <laughs> MC Light. You know what I'm saying? For real, man. Yo, for mm. real. Peace and love to to uh, Shy Rock. Mm. The first true queen MC, but uh, MC Light. I want to put Light and Latifah in there in that one. Mm. In that one. Yeah, yeah one. Yeah, they the they, they kind of help push the, the 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 culture forward. Mm. I'm seeing Biggie. Biggie, no question. Boom, <laughs> boom, boom, boom. I mean, we know what it is. Um. Okay. And rest in peace to the man with the with the golden monotone. Ooh, there you go. Hey, yeah. That's the four times. <laughs> that was tough, but that's my ten. Mm. Sounds good. Man. That was that was amazing. That was good. Thank you so much. A lot of people got left out of that ten, but again, this is the perfect example of what I'm talking about. Like, there's so many of us here. There's so much greatness. You can't just fit it into, like you said earlier, a top five mm. or a top ten. There's too many of us. Ask me the same about producers, and I'll have the same problem. It's just so many. It's too many. I'm sure. Well, get ready, because it's coming. Oh, no, shit. No, <laughs> we ain't going to do that. You know no, what I'm saying? I'm just talking about it. I'm just pat, pat. <laughs> Yeah, he was like, okay, producers, but now he was just fucking around. Hey. That's Easy Mo B's list. 
For all y'all who tuned in late, whatever, we with the great Easy Mo B, classic music, classic individual. A lot of uh, joints on uh, Biggie's album. I need to know. You got one more? You Go got... ahead, say whatever you want Man, to say. Man, <clears throat> I need to know, because you seem like you're on all the sessions, you seem like you're there for everything. I need to know what the session for Flavor In Your Ear remix was like. That is one of the best posse cuts of all time, and I just feel like if it was all done at once, that was the most wild session that had the craziest story. It was not done all at once. Okay. It's, uh, I'm so glad you asked that. Matter of fact, you asked one question that when I do interviews, nobody asks. Good job. They like, da, 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 da. they like to talk about the record. They don't never get necessarily as deep as the question you asked. Um, a, a lot of all of the vocals was recorded separately. Mm. Okay. LL did his separately. Yeah. Buster did his separately. Oh shit. None of them really was together. That's the mm. way I remember it. I remember mm. us being in the studio and Puff telling me we waiting for this one verse, we waiting for that one. So they were, is that just on the cusp of digital? They, were they showing up with reels? What were they doing? They were coming, coming through with the reel? Back then, we were still on the 24 track um, tape, 24 and 48 track tape. Waiting on a Busta Rhymes reel. That's, that's that was right. on 48 track tape. I think, I think maybe when uh, Busta came in to do his, Rampage was there in the studio. Because you remember Flip Mode Squad. They was yeah, yeah, we was on so tour. He probably came to the studio with Bus to do his, but I can't remember the rest of any two artists in there at the same time. Damn. It's so crazy because to say that about a record because that's the way a lot of music <laughs> is made today now. Yeah. That's, mm. that's the way a lot of music is made today now. Yet us back then, we was being in the flesh. Today, you mail, email the track out. You know what I mean? Send the track yeah, cool. out. Then Quick. Exactly. And they send you the vocals back. Right. Right. Yeah, this it is came out, turned out to be an amazing record, though, regardless of the... Of, the of course. This... Now, did you produce Everything Remains Raw for Buster? You mean on that song? No, on that on The Coming. Did you produce that song, Everything Remains Raw? On that album, I produce Everything Remains Raw and It's a Party featuring Jean A. I just. Yeah. yeah. I knew it. I knew it. Just, it just popped in my head when we were talking about nah, that. That's the, that's Bust the song. I mean, yeah, some joints. So, so it's our man Easy Mo B from the Biggie Classics behind those. Big Daddy Kane to jump off. Bust him. You name it. He was doing it, doing his thing, man. He, he did that heist one too. Legendary records. Nah, things we were doing for money. On social media, first of all, let me get that out the way. On Instagram, you got at. Easy Mo B at E A S Y M O B E E. The Twitter is at E A S Y underscore M O underscore B E E. Um, Facebook, I'm under my government on there, Austin Harvey. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, you find yeah. that. But mm -hmm. as far as uh, what we can look forward to, I'm putting a lot of my focus into that album. Mm -hmm. the album. The the instrumental, yeah. The instrumental That's album. cool. And look, for anybody that, that, I don't know if you're still hungry, if you still got hunger and crave in your soul, for hip hop as we knew it, that's what you're gonna find on that album. That's beautiful, man. You know, Bad Boy, you know, it's one of the biggest labels in the hi history of hip hop, and you're kind of like one of the architects of their sound, you know, of, of the sound that they're originally known for. I want to know, man, in, in that era, were there any songs that you produced that you couldn't clear the samples for, so you had to remake that, you know, like, um, you know, Machine Gun Funk? Was there origi original Machine Gun Funk that you couldn't clear? The, the samples you had to remake it. I'm just kind of curious about that. I remember on on the title track "Ready to Die," there was a sample from the Young Rascals. Young Rascals, boy, Spanky. It, it wouldn't clear. Not a young, not a little rascal. 
on a Sunday afternoon. That Ooh, right. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. On a Sunday afternoon. Yeah, he That's got it like, oh, we are we out there. Go ahead. That's man. Good and clear. Um mm. and it's so crazy because it's, it was all in the same song and ready to die. The young rascals didn't mm. clear. And um the horns that you hear on the on the hook, or rather those those horns came out due to like um sampling problems there was a sample there was a different hook horn hook in the beginning and on the hooks of ready to die that had to come out it was an idris Muhammad sample word that's crazy so, yeah there have been samples that had to be pulled out couldn't get cleared he wasn't allowed to use it still made it straight it's crazy you said um the, the song was from the rascals and you can see behind me, you know, we got Spanky back here from the little <laughs> rascals. You know what I mean? Um, he's just chilling out with me for a hot minute. But let's listen, because, like, we was just having this debate, right? If you had two choices, right? If you, I'm just saying, it's just, just out left field. Would you prefer to eat a chicken pie, chicken pot pie, or shepherd's pie? Hmm. What? Shepherd's pie. Shepherd, shepherd's pie is like beef, I mean, potatoes, yeah, gravy. No. So if he don't know, he, then yeah. he'll, he's going to... What it is... Irish shit. It, it's, it's a plate, man. It's, it's kind of Irish. It's supposed to have lamb. They used to have it, it when I was in it. jail. They had that shit the same t every week at one spot. But it's like burgers, corn. With a, Some of it has a crust, and then it, some has, I think, potatoes. So picture this. It. There's meat on the bottom. Then there's a layer of mashed potatoes. Yeah. Oh, cr yeah. And then you could put some cheese maybe on top or some yeah, gravy on top yeah. or whatever like that. So I'm just but, saying. So it, obviously, ch 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 chicken pot pie is what it's. <laughs> no, I think I'm gonna rock with that chicken pot pie. See, what I'm saying, dog. You know what I mean? I was like, I mean, the first time I seen Shepherd's pie, man, I was locked down. You know? Oh no shit! And, I and grew I, up yeah, on I was it. like, yo. He said he grew up in the south. That spanky right there. Spank, spank. So I'm in this job. I'm like, what is that shit? You know, I'm, I'm from the hood for real. I'm like, dude's like, yo, Shepherd's pie. I said, Shepherd's pie. Yo, I'm, I'm 28 or 20 something years old at the time, locked, you know, and I'm like, I ain't never heard what no motherfucking shepherd's pie in my what life. You know them, you know them, them pot pies, even in Boston, you was getting four of them for a dollar. You was like, them shits was dinners sometimes, you know what I mean? So, you know what I mean? So now they got all funky with these new ones, but back then that shit was dinner. You know, the shepherd's pie, if you the motherfucker, had, hey, Guru took me, rest in peace, my man, he took me to his crib. He didn't. He he wanted to let me know his mom's cooking was different, right? Because she didn't cook like you know they were a little more different menu, almost like uh, prestige or whatever they used to do. He was like, "Yo, my mom's can't really cook, right?" And I said, "Come on, dog. Like, how you going? Yeah, we all black. Like, how you saying that? You know?" He said, "No, I'm just letting you know." Then we go in his crib and for dinner, they had they had tuna casserole, right? So now I'm in Guru's house. Like this is before all the everything. We just boys. I'm like. What, what is that? He said, oh, it's tuna casserole. Would you like some? I was like, nah, you know, uh, uh, no thank you. I'm being nice as shit. Then his mom's brought out the string, string bean casserole. This is all shit I've never seen in my life. Like, I saw him like. See, that must be a white thing there, because I heard of ca casseroles when I, when I was a kid. I mean, I've just, yeah. we, yo, we wasn't casserole. We like, eat everything on your goddamn plate. You know what I'm saying? So would you ever eat like, anything that had noodles and tuna in it? Like, nah. as a meal and call it something else? Not when I was a kid. No, it just have a different name. I wasn't in the crib. Did you eat grits? Nah, but I knew what they were. <laughs> yeah, I didn't eat them. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love grits. Man. Yo, that was a random ass <laughs> question, man. It was. It was hey, great, me, though, actually. I just was like, it was wild. Cause I, <laughs> I never I never had tuna casserole before either. Though. See what I'm saying? Like, and, and, yo, son, I didn't. First of all, once I seen it at Guru's mom house, rest in peace to her, too. I, I knew before I got there, and I knew when I left there, I was never having that. You know what I'm saying? So I was like, I, I'm, as I ate it once, I, I was lied to what it was. But when I when I did eat it, they just told me it was chicken. And, yes. and when I did eat it, 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 it wasn't bad. I, like I, I wouldn't, I don't think I would eat it knowing it was nah. tuna casserole though. Like, nah, they it, told if, if somebody made chicken that tastes like tuna casserole, I'm never coming back. You understand? <laughs> <laughs> yo, I would never go back to the eat. Just, come on, man. Anyway, man, yo, it won't be my man, my bro. You know what I'm saying? 
we, we had a great time, man, talking to you. And thank you for blessing us with your presence, man. And, and, and you know, just the, it's, you, you represent, you know, a time, you know, that I rode through too, but for a whole, like, era, man, of, you know, people and, and the legacy of Big and the legacy of you. And, and as you still move forward, as we move forward, Man, we appreciate you, man. Thank you and, so um, much, man. Honor. Woo Family Moving Company. They've been your neighborhood moving company for over 10 years, offering swift, efficient, and stress-free moving. Just call Woo Family Moving at 978-398-2784, online at R-O-U-X-FamilyMoving.com. We got our man Tremaine in the house. Uh, you got to go check out a video I did for him. It's called Like Ooh. It's on YouTube. It's on his channel. It's on my channel. Like, ooh. Hit, hit subscribe on each. What, that's not it? No, that's it, really, the way you said that. Oh, yeah, wow. I said it all way. What's up? That boy said. <laughs> what you think? I'm trying. That boy said, Lou. You, you, got me, you got me confused, Big Sugar? No, that boy said, Lou. Nah, um, I'm for Go check that know. shit out on YouTube. Check YouTube, it out, man. man. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, check our clips. Who? But this week, well, stupid as hell. <laughs> uh, we just started out like this. A Florida man who returned home from a doctor's appointment got a surprise in the eyeful when he discovered a woman skinny dipping in his pool. She was naked as hell. Clothes strewn on on the veranda on his veranda and led the unidentified man to the 42-year-old Heather Kennedy. Heather Kennedy, who was swimming <laughs> naked as hell. Naked as hell. In his pool. According from the sheriff's department, according to the sheriff's department, imagine returning home to find a naked woman swimming in your pool. Mm. Well, he told her to get off, and she refused to get. Out. He told her to get out, and she refused to get out. So then the sheriff's police uh, had to arrest her. You know what I'm saying? So, <laughs> did she have clothes on the on the like the side of the pool? Her? Or did they bring him down to the police station? You know, that's something that you have to look into. Oh. But this week, stupid as hell, <laughs> is, is Heather Dio, Kennedy. Our 42-year-old Heather Kennedy oh, swimming sure. naked in somebody's pool that wasn't her own. Maybe it was hot as hell. Anyway, <laughs> this week, she's stupid <laughs> as hell. <laughs> man, imagine. So, yeah, that was good, man. 22 episodes deep of this shit. Yeah, man, it's been real. It's, it, it's been good, man. You know, I mean, us uh, being patient and, and y'all being patient and, and talking about some good things and just hanging out with us, man, because, you know, I don't look at it as a show. I, I look at it as hanging out. You know, shit you want to talk about and what we present, it is what it is, man. So, you know, we here, man. The Danger Zone Podcast, man, episode 22. 22. Or, or like we say in hip-hop, show mode. Two! Two. You know what I'm saying? Well, it's been good. Uh, we appreciate y'all, man. Salute y'all. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like I always say, man, excuses have no purpose, so don't make them. You know, um, as we glow, we grow, man. Rock with us, man. And uh, until next time, peace. On my dark days, I chopped crack on a regular. Ran up in spots and clapped on a regular. Took big fat ass stacks. From the register, no matter how hard they tried, they still couldn't measure up. Hard I have, you joke when I stab. Brands in my pocket and still caught a cab.